Okay, so we're still missing a few people, but we're going to get started. So let's see, on the schedule, well, let me share my screen. All right, so today uh, we're going to go over the quiz that we had last class for a bit, answer any questions that you may have. And just like we do pretty much every time now, we're going to have a slight review of what we covered last week, and then we'll continue on with arrays. Okay, so I'm going to go back to MATLAB, and we're going to look at the quiz. Um, so I sent out an announcement, I don't know, I think it was sometime on the weekend. Uh, so the quiz average was at 77.19%, something like that. So that's, you know, that's an okay average. Um, Ideally, I would want to have an average in around 80% or something. Uh, you know, I don't make the quizzes to, you know, try to make them really hard or anything like that. But uh, that average is okay. But again, I'd like to see it a little bit higher. So uh, first thing, I'm going to make a little poll here. Another thing on this computer, Zoom like disappears when I share my screen. Okay, now let's, here, now I can look at the polls. Okay, so, poll. How is the quiz? So tell me if it was too hard, a little hard, a little easy, or too easy. Even though I know the average, I wanna see what all of you uh, think yourself. And of course, it's all anonymous too. Okay, so most of you are saying that it's a little hard. It's, a, it's pretty even here. All right. Okay, most of you answered. So there's a question, what was the quiz out of? So uh, the quiz, you know, is only eight questions, but on the grade online, that's a percentage. Canvas doesn't show that it's a percentage. It's kind of weird, but uh, it's a percentage. I just ended the poll, so you probably can't uh, vote anymore. So yeah, so on Canvas, it, it should be a percentage, but if you have any questions on your grade, feel free to, you know, either ask me after class or office hours today or in an email, I mean, whatever you want. So yeah, so uh, for, the, for the poll though, I don't know if you can see the results now or not, but 59% of you thought it's a little hard and 42% thought it's a little easy. So uh, that seems, you know, not too bad. Okay, let me share my screen again. All right, so does anyone have any main questions uh, for the quiz? So I know one of you wanted to go over uh, appending rows and columns. So we'll go over that. Okay, so uh, for the quiz, I basically put it on shuffle for all of your, your quizzes. They were the same questions, but it was on shuffle. So looking at this PDF right now, this is question four for me, but it might have been a different uh, number for you. But We'll go over this right now because we're appending arrays here. Okay, so for question four, we were told to write MATLAB code for the following. So we have to make a row vector A, a row vector B, and then we want to append those row vectors A and B to create any row vector C. So let's do A equals five, five, three, two, negative seven. And we're gonna enclose that in brackets because we wanna make a row vector here. And then we'll do B equals negative two, zero, two. Close that in brackets. And then we wanna make a new row vector C from those two row vectors. And so a few of you, you got this mostly correct. And I gave you, I think like a, basically 75% uh, for this question. 
Uh, most of you, are, you know, like you, uh, you typed out A and B correctly, but you got the order wrong for C. So, you know, pay attention to the order that I'm asking you to put. So basically we need to do C equals B and then a comma A. And then we get that output that I asked for right here. So some of you put A comma B. Okay, so number five, most of you got this one correct, although, you know, a fair amount uh, didn't. So here, let me clear everything again. So we have uh, one column vector here, that's U, and then we have another column vector, V. So let's make those right now. We have three, 12, three, negative four. And we have 200, negative two, I don't want to suppress it. Okay. So now I, I made some variable called apple and I'm putting in U transposed and then V transposed. And I'm asking you, what should the output of apple be? Um, type out the resulting array if you think it's going to work. And if you don't think it's going to work, explain why. So uh, some of you thought that it wouldn't work because these uh, dimensions weren't the same. So if we do a size of view, we see that we have four rows in one column. And then if we do a size of V, we see we have two rows in one column. So they are different sizes, but this operation is still going to work because we're transposing those column arrays into one new row array. So if I do apple equals U transpose comma V transpose, then I'm gonna get this output here where apple equals three, 12, three, negative four, 200 and negative two. I should have put a negative two uh, for, uh, for the vector V. E, so I just forgot that. But again, because we're transposing those column arrays, then we're making one new row array or row vector. And this uh, operation is going to work for us. Let me change my uh, font size here. Okay, it looks a little weird now, but hopefully it's a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's see. And then there was another one that I think had caused a bit of trouble. Uh, so for when you're making these, uh, well, basically two different matrices here, or it's the same matrix, but they, it was made in a different way. So uh, some of you had issues making the matrix A here from three column vectors. You basically did the same thing where you built this matrix from three row vectors. So let's go over how to do this right now. Okay, so if we're gonna make it from row vectors, I think everyone's pretty good at that. So we do three, zero, three, or negative three. And then we're using a semicolon. So we just made our first row here and the semicolon is saying, okay, now I wanna make a new row. So then we'll do four, 18, two, and we're going to use another semicolon because now we want to go in the third row. Zero, negative nine, 66. Okay, and then there's our matrix A. And now we need to make the same matrix A, but this time from three column vectors. So remember, if we're doing it from column vectors, and I want to see you actually, you know, define three column vectors. So some of you, you made this uh, matrix in a different way than you just you know made it previously, but you didn't build it up from three column vectors. So um, that's what I wanted to see. So remember for that, we need to wrap each column vector in its own set of brackets. So I'm first gonna have one left bracket for this entire matrix here. And I'll do the first column vector. So three, four, three, four, zero, and you see that I wrapped that in its own column vector right there. And I can, I can put a comma or I don't need to put a comma. Zero, 18, 
negative 9, and then negative 3 to 66. And then we have that same matrix A. Okay, uh, oops, I guess I forgot a number here, but on this question here, this should be question eight. I'm wanting, wanting you to make a column vector and one line of code using the lint space command. So I think some of you uh, forgot the, how to use the lint space command or something like that. Uh, you, you just didn't put it. So some of you just defined a column vector like one, two, three, four, five. And yes, that makes the same column vector here, but I wanted to see you actually using the lint space command. So for that, we need to do T equals lint space. And we have two different options here. We can either do x1, x2, or x1, x2, and then have a third argument n, where n is gonna specify the length of our column or the number of elements that we want in the column. So we can just do one, I want to start at one, then I want to go to five, and then I want a length of five, or have five elements here. And then I need to do the transpose operation to make it a column vector. So let's compare this. If I did one space, one, five, five, that's just going to get us a row vector. I asked for, for a column vector, so we need to transpose it. Likewise, if I just did one space one comma five and I transposed that, I'm gonna suppress this output now. Now, if we look at our workspace, it's a 100 by one double. So we have 100 rows and one column. So that's the default length for, for the one space command. It's gonna make some array that has 100 values in it. So. Uh, for this question, I basically asked you to have a length of five. So that's why we put five on that last argument right there. Okay, I don't want to spend too long on the quiz. So I'm going to see if there's anything else that you guys struggled with. I don't think so. Uh, are there any other questions though on the quiz? Are we going to be able to see like what we got wrong or is it kind of like? Yeah. Um, can you see what you put? Do you mean for the quiz, Victor? Okay. Um, yeah, you should be able to. So obviously I don't want to look at anyone's quiz, you know, in front of everyone, but um, you should be able to, uh, if you can't, then, and it seems like you guys can't look at it. Um, I'll look into that because yeah, I want you, to, and I even like put comments on some of your quizzes. So I want you to be able to look at the feedback that I gave you, see what you put, see how many points I gave you per question. Uh, so yeah, so if you can't do that, I'm going to look into that after class because you should be able to do that. Okay, so if that's it for the quiz, then we'll get started now on today's lecture. Okay, so uh, for the slides, okay, so Andrew is saying that you can open it, but there, there aren't any comments, so. Okay, so yeah, I'll look into that. Uh, is that you should be able to see what's right and what's wrong. Okay. So yeah, I'll look into that after class, but thanks for letting me know. Okay, so uh, for, the, for the lecture slides here, I uploaded the, you know, updated slides late last night again. Let's see, we're right here, okay. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to get the new slides, uh, check out Canvas, and I have that updated. But today we're going to do a quick review again based on this last exercise that we talked about. Um, you know, the review for last week is basically what we just did right now, reviewing the quiz. Uh, but this last exercise that we had here was a little, um, maybe it was a lot to take in at once, so we're going to go over that again. 
And then we're gonna continue on. So we'll talk about the magnitude, the length and, and absolute value for vectors. And then our main focus for uh, today's lecture will be on multi-dimensional arrays and then uh, array multiplication. And that's probably all we're gonna get to, maybe some of matrix multiplication. Uh, but those two right here, they're gonna be really the bulk of, of what we have left for this chapter. Okay, so I have different exercise. Let me pull it up in my history. Okay, so, so we have this um, matrix right here. So I want you to define the matrix that's on the screen that's uh, in my MATLAB console here. And then I guess I'll make a comment. Actually, I think I, whatever. Okay, let me make a comment here. So I want you to make some new vector here from this matrix. So we'll do new vector using, we'll do row two, new row vector using row two and column three. Okay, so you can assign whatever variable you want to use here. Um, but yeah, we wanna make a new row vector here using column two. So our output should be six, zero, six. And then we want column three, five, six, nine. Okay, that should be the output. So I'm gonna give you um, a minute or two to work on that. All right, so I put up a poll. So just tell me when you're done with the exercise. Again, this is like a, you know, a, a downside of having classes on Zoom. I can't just walk around and see if everyone's done. Okay, so most of you are done, so we're gonna just go over it right now. Okay, so we wanna make a new row vector using row two and column three. So to do this, we're gonna uh, do new equals, and then I need to put in a left bracket here because I wanted to find um, a new row vector. So we'll do left bracket. Now I wanna do all of the second row, so I'm gonna do two and then a comma, and then a colon. So we'll show you this first. Well, okay, so we'll do A, two, comma, colon. And that's gonna give us the output for everything that's in this second row in matrix A. Okay, so remember the colon when we're using this uh, um, basically array addressing, the colon means take everything for this, uh, for this index. So you know, if we put a colon instead of two here, that would say, take everything in this row. Okay, so we want to do two new, left bracket, A, we want the second row, all the values in the second row here. And then I want to make a row vector, so I'm going to put a comma now. Again, you don't need to put a comma. 
And then we want all of the values in the third uh, column. So I'm gonna use a colon again, then comma three. So this is saying take all of the values in this third column, so five, six, nine. Now I wanna make a row vector. So what I have to do is transpose this column vector. So we'll use the transpose operation and then we'll put a right bracket. And then we get our output that we wanted. So let's go back. I'm gonna take out that transpose operation. And then if we try to run this, we're gonna get this error because basically we have uh, some row vector and some column vector. We're trying to merge them and they're different dimensions, so we can't do that. All right, so that's why we need to put in that transpose operation. Any questions on that before I wipe the screen? Okay. Okay, so here's a little table, it's in the book. Um, some basic functions that we're gonna talk about for arrays. You've already talked about a lot of these, but you'll see here there is a lun space command and there's also a log space command. So we're actually going to talk about that command in chapter five for plotting. Okay, so here we have a slide on magnitude, length, and absolute value. So we're just going to quickly go over this. That I don't really think it's um, all that important for what we're going to do in the class here, but. So let's consider this vector that we have. We have x equals two, negative four, and five. Oh yeah, I should have talked about this in the beginning. So sorry, I forgot, but our next homework, I'm going to assign that today. So I think I need to add like another question or two. So I'm gonna upload the homework sometime later today and I'll make an announcement too. Um, and that'll be due uh, next Monday. So you're going to have a week to work on it. It'll be due next Monday by, again, you know, 11.59 p.m. And then our next quiz is going to be not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. So for that, it's going to be everything that we start covering today and everything that we have already covered. You know, quizzes, they're, I'm going to use quotes here. They're cumulative just in the sense that we're using basic uh, knowledge, you know, like making a row vector that we learned earlier on in the class. Uh, but, you know, the main focus on the material is going to be what we cover from now until uh, next Monday. And again, I'll, I'll make an announcement for what should be on the quiz too, but, you know, your homework and what we cover in class, that's going to be uh, what's going to help you for the quiz. Okay, so we have this vector x here. So we, we've already been using the uh, command length. So if I type in length of x, that's just gonna tell us how many uh, values we have in this array. We have three values here. So that's a length of three. So the magnitude is like, you know, from your math class, that's gonna be the square root of our vector. And we're gonna uh, square each element in that vector. So for this, all we have to do is norm of x and then that's gonna give us our magnitude. Again, this is more just to have a mathematical operation. You might use it, you know, maybe. I never have personally for anything I've worked on, but it's still good to know. And then the absolute value. So this is going to take the absolute value for each value in our, in our array here. So you might use this a bit more often. So we have the absolute value of two, well, that's just two. Then the absolute value of negative four, that'll be four. And then the absolute value of five, that'll just be five. So uh, pretty basic uh, functions here. All right, multi-dimensional arrays. So you actually might be using this at a few times. You're gonna use it in your EGME 306B lab before the uh, heat exchanger lab. So. I know that, that's a way off, but you might, you know, remember that once you do the lab. Okay, so, uh, so we've already talked about matrices. So a matrix has dimensions M by N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns. So 
I'm gonna make a random matrix here. So I'll do Okay, so remember this uh, function that I just wrote here, Randy. This uh, generates random numbers and the i specifies an integer. So I want to make uh, you know some random numbers that are integers from 1 to 10. And then the matrix size here is a 3 by 3. Mm, actually, let me change this. We'll do 3 by 4. Okay, so if I type in size of A, I also, again, remember the Randy command, you know, you're not going to be tested on that. This is just for my convenience, just to show you stuff. Okay, so if I type in size of A, we see our answer is 3 and 4. So 3 that corresponds to M, which is the number of rows we have. So in this matrix, we have three rows here. And then 4 that corresponds to N, and n corresponds to our number of columns. So we have one, two, three, four columns. Okay, so a multi-dimensional array or matrix uh, in this case, that's gonna have dimensions n by n by q. So everything is gonna be the same as a matrix. We still have n by n for that matrix, but then q that's going to correspond to um, in quotes, the page that we have or the, the layer that we have. So we're basically going to have, you know, one matrix and then another matrix and then another matrix. So let's show you what this looks like. And there's going to be, I said four ways, but there's really uh, two ways that we're going to talk about at least. We can make a matrix and then we can extend it or we can use the cat command. So this will make more sense once we do this first exercise here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is extend our matrix to make a multi-dimensional array. So we'll do A equals 3, 0, 3. So in this case, I'm making this matrix by, um, by using row vectors, okay? So 3, 0, 3, 2, 3, 2, 9, zero, nine, and there's our matrix right there. Okay, so now I want to extend the array. So I want to make a multi-dimensional array here. So to do that, I'm gonna use a colon, comma, colon, comma, two. So I'll talk about this, but let's just type this out. Two, 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 three, 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 and four, four, four. Okay, so on the left-hand side here of the equal sign, we typed in A colon, comma, colon, comma, two. So again, what we're doing here is extending this matrix that we have. So we have A colon, comma, colon. So I'm saying I want to keep all of the rows here and I want to keep all of the columns. So basically I'm keeping all of that matrix that I just made. That's why I have colon, comma, colon. I wanted to keep all of it. And then we have comma two. So I'm saying to basically add another layer to our matrix here. So if I do this, should I have suppressed it? Okay. So if I do that, then we get this output right here. So everything below this line, this is our output that we have. So now we see that a colon comma colon comma one, that's our first layer for our multi-dimensional array. And that's that, you know, that first matrix that we made up here. And below that we have a colon comma colon comma two. This is the second layer that we have for our multi-dimensional array. And then we have that new matrix that we defined right here. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so uh, one you might be using this because this might seem, you know, kind of weird right now. Uh, it'd be like, you know, I'm just going to talk about the lab again just because that's, I think it's, uh, it gives you the most kind of context. So once you do this lab uh, later on, I think most of you are freshmen or sophomores. So once you do EGME 306B, 
one of the labs is a, uh, a heat exchanger lab. So for that, you're taking uh, readings for temperature on some object and you're gonna have multiple tests for this reading. So we have like 20 tests or something. And then you wanna import all of that data into MATLAB. So in this case, we have, basically we had uh, 20 matrices. So um, we could import that data as a multi-dimensional array. So, uh, so yeah, you will use it at some point, at least for the labs here. You're not gonna use it you know, too often, but it's something that's useful. Okay, so do all the matrices need to be the same size? So the answer to that is yes, they do. So if we were gonna run through this little example here, um, so yeah, let's just do that. We'll do A equals Randy. So again, this is gonna generate a matrix here, a random matrix. So I wanna have integers from zero to 10. And then I'll do three rows and we'll do uh, five columns, okay? So if you type in this code right now on your laptop or your computer, it's not, you know, it's gonna look a little, di a little different. The numbers are gonna be different, but the size should be the same. So here I have a matrix A where I have three rows and five columns. Okay, so I can extend this array right now. So I'll do A colon comma colon comma two, because I want to add a new layer. And then I'll make a new random matrix. We'll do um, values from one to five. And then I wanna have, again, three rows and five columns. Okay, so I can do that. I could extend that array because I have the same size. Now, however, if I try to add a new layer, So let's do Randy, we'll do uh, one to five again. So now let's do three rows and four columns, or we'll do six columns. So now I have a different size, so now it's not going to work. It's unable to perform the assignment because the size of the left side is three by five, and the size of the right side is three by six. So here it's saying, your size here for the matrix that you kept, that was a size of three by five. We had three rows and five columns. And you're trying to add a size of three by six, so we can't do that. So you need to make sure that the size of your matrices are the same. Something that you can do to fix this, and we'll, you know, I'm just gonna briefly touch on it now, but this will be something that we learn later on, is you can use the zeros command. So let's say that I know I'm gonna have a matrix later on of size five by five. But some of my other matrices, they might be a size of, you know, three by three or, you know, anything less than five by five. So for that, we could use the zeros command. And that just gives us a matrix here that's five by five and it's just filled with zeros. So Later on, if I have some different matrix, we'll say B. And this was, we'll do one to 10. If this was a size of three by three, then I can later on, I can basically, uh, really I should have done A equals that, but we'll talk about this later on. But basically, um, this will allow us to have multi-dimensional arrays um, you know, together, even if they're different sizes, because we have this zeros command, which will, here, let's actually show you now. Equal zero, five comma five. And then, so I'm gonna update A basically right now. We'll do A equals three, zero, three, two, three, two. Okay, so it's, it's actually not gonna work right now. So, um, but basically what we need to do, and so I need to, I guess, look at this again. Um, but we what we want to have 
is we would basically need to update our uh, matrix here where it would have a two by three array and then all of the other values would be zero. So, um, so yeah, I need to check on this again. I know you can't do it because I do it pretty often, but I guess I'm blanking out a bit right now. So anyways, that'll be something that we talk about in I think chapter three. So we'll discuss it then. Okay, are there any questions on extending arrays though? So using this kind of format here. What's the significance of it? Uh, so mainly it would just be used to uh, more easily look at a lot of data. So that's why I talked about the, the uh, heat transfer lab that you're gonna do later on, but it's a way just to more neatly look at a lot of similar data, like if you have multiple tests of something. You won't use it too often, but once you do use it, it's going to be convenient for you. Okay, so a different way we can do this is using the cat command. So that's going to concatenate um, our arrays. So we'll go over this, but before we actually make those, um, basically extend our arrays, but you, you know, using this different method here, using the cat command, Let's talk about the syntax. So the syntax that we have is cat and then n comma a comma b comma c that'll extend on. So n that's gonna be our dimension and then a that's gonna be some matrix a, b will be some matrix b and c that'll be some matrix c. And you know, we could continue on and on and on. So let's do, we'll define two matrices right now, a and b. So we'll do A equals one, one, one. That's our first row. And then we'll make the second row two, two, two. And then we'll make a matrix B. We'll make that three, 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 and then four, four, four. Okay, so if I do cat, so if I do cat uh, A, Well, let me just follow along with my slides here. So I'm going to define a new matrix C. So we're going to make this new matrix C and then we'll basically we're going to append B to A. So if I have a semicolon here, it's going to put matrix A at the top here. So we have one, 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 two, two, two. And since I put a semicolon, it's going to put matrix B below matrix A. So that's something that we already knew how to do before. But if I now update what we just defined. So now I can do matrix C equals cat. So we're gonna use our cat command, which again means uh, concatenate. So now if we do one comma A comma B, that means use a dimension of one and use our matrices A and B. And that's going to be the same as what we just did up here. So if we use the concatenate command and we have a dimension of one, that says to basically transpose um, our arrays where you have one array up top, that's our second argument right here, A. And then after that, put that next matrix below that first matrix. So uh, let me go over this, I guess, a bit more slowly. So we have one matrix. Question? Would this also work with column vectors as well? Uh, yeah, it should, yeah. Yeah, you can do it with uh, row vectors, column vectors, or matrices like right now. Okay, so we have our matrix A up top here. And then we need to write a matrix B. So once we use the cat command with a dimension of one, and then we specify our first matrix A, and then we give our second matrix B, it says uh, put matrix A up top, and then below that put matrix B. So if we instead, We'll go on the next slide here. If we do C equals cat two A comma B, instead of putting matrix B below matrix A, it's gonna put it to the right of matrix A. So this is uh, transposing where it's gonna go to the right. Okay, so and that's gonna be the same as if we just did C equals A comma B. 
Okay, but what we want to do is talk about how to make a multi-dimensional array. So let me clear the screen. Okay, so we have A and B. So now I want to take those two matrices here and make a multi-dimensional um, array out of it. So we'll do C equals cat. And this time we're gonna put a dimension of three. So once we do that, it's gonna make it a multi-dimensional array. And then we'll do A comma B. And now you see on the first page here, we have our first matrix A, and then on the second page, we have our second matrix B. So we could have just done, I will, yeah, we, so we could have just done, let's see, D equals A. I wanna keep all of the rows and all of the columns. And then I want to make this matrix two here. And then we would just need to specify the other matrix that we wanted here. So so I guess really what I should have done is uh, C. Mm, well, we can do, I don't we'll, we'll go over like this. So D equals one, 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 and then two, two, two. And then we would have to extend that. So keep all the rows, keep all the columns. And then we could add on here, three, 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 and then four, four, four. And then we have this uh, same output here. So now I just have a different variable for that multi-dimensional array. Okay, so let's see. Okay, we have an exercise in a, in a few slides. Okay, but first we'll talk about array addressing with multi-dimensional arrays. So, so just like we were doing before to specify, you know, a certain element in a matrix or a certain row or a certain column, we can do that for multi-dimensional arrays as well. So I'm actually going to type out an array here so you can follow along. So we'll make some matrix R. Uh, we'll do three, two, 10, negative five, six, seven, two, zero, two. Okay, so we have our matrix R. And then I'll make a matrix S here. We'll do zero, zero, eight, four, five, 10, 20, 23, four. Okay, so then we're going to make a new uh, multi-dimensional array from those two arrays or matrices that we just defined here. So we'll do T equals, and we'll use the cat command. So three comma R comma S. And then here is our multi-dimensional array that we just created. Okay, what is, so. What does yeah. the three mean uh, in cat? Three, that's our, uh, our dimension. So remember our formatting, our syntax is, I put N before, but N stands for dimension. So if we put one, that's when we transpose our matrices, like it would uh, put, in this case, it would put matrix S below matrix R. So if I go back in the slides here, if we add a dimension of one, I would put, you know, in this case, I'd put matrix S below R. So just like in this slide here. If okay. it was a dimension of two, it would put it to the right. And if it's a dimension of three, it creates our multi-dimensional array. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have this multi-dimensional array. Now, if I wanna, you know, look at some value or some row or some column, on some page, I can do that, or some layer, you know, however you want to think of it. So our multi-dimensional array is T. Now I can look at, um, so we'll look at this slide, we'll do this example, and then we'll do a few more. So I can look at the third row, the second column, and then I need to specify what layer or page I want to look at. So let's say I want to do it for this first page up here. 
So that takes our third row and then our second column here and then page one. So that, that value is zero. Let's instead do uh, T will do the first row, the first column, and then the first layer. So that should give us an output of three right there. Okay, and it does. So we can do, uh, let's look at the second page here. Let's do uh, the third row. So we'll do three, comma, and then we want to have all of those values in this third row here. So we're going to use a colon, and then we want to look at that second layer. And then that gives us that row right there. Okay, so any questions on uh, array addressing for multidimensional arrays? Um, I'm doing the part where it says T3, comma, 2, comma, 1. I keep getting an error. It says it's an invalid expression. Okay, so maybe you, uh, you know, type something a little different than I typed uh, earlier on, because that should work. So I'm going to look that over. And then if you can't get it, just stay after class and I can help you out or go into office hours. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about a range of values. So we just did that for the third row here in our second layer. All right, so now we have an exercise here. Okay, so for this, yeah, I'm not having you do a specific thing, but so you can do this on your own. So I want you to make three individual four by eight matrices, A, B, and C. So they can be any values you know that you want. You can make that yourself. Then I want you to generate a multidimensional array D using the cat command. And then below that, I want you to specify the value for the third row and the fifth column of the second layer. All right, and then I'll show you, you know, I'll just do this on my own and we'll go over that. So I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. Uh, no, you don't have to use Randy for the matrices. You know, you can just make whatever random or whatever matrix you wanted to find yourself. It's up to you. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys are done, but even if you're not, I'm gonna go over this myself right now. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we're gonna make our matrix A here. We want a four by eight. Uh, so that is pretty big. So I'm just gonna use the Randy command because I don't wanna type a ton. So I'll do Randy, we'll have values from one to 10, comma, four, comma, eight. Okay, so that's going to give us a random matrix using integers from 1 to 10. And our size is going to be 4 rows and 8 columns. And we'll do B. I could just do this. So B, we're going to make a new random matrix with values from 1 to 10. And it's going to be a 4 by 8 matrix. And then we have another matrix C. 
Okay, so now I want to make a multi-dimensional array D using the cat command. So we'll do D equals cat. So since we want a multi-dimensional array, our first argument needs to be three. And then we want to have the matrices A, B, and C. Okay, so I'm not going to suppress this output, but we're going to have a lot of stuff that's going to show up now. All right, so here's our multi-dimensional array. Now I want to specify the value for the third row. Sorry, so I want to have the third row and the fifth column in the second layer. So here is our second layer. I'm going to go to the third row and the fifth column. So, so we should have an output of four. So I'm just going to make some a variable that's called out. And then I want to do D because that's our multi-dimensional array here. So I want the third row, the fifth column, and the last part here is going to be the layer that we want. So layer two. And then we have our output of four. Did I say three before? I forget, but we have our third row and then column one, two, three, four, and then five. So we get that output of four. Okay, so there's a question from Victor. Um, so he wants to know what the three in front of ABC does. So yeah, um, I did talk about that, but um, yeah, it may be a little weird at first. So three, if we want to make a multi-dimensional array, we need to use this number three. That stands for the dimension. So in this case, a dimension of three, that's gonna make a multi-dimensional array where we have different layers. And if you did one or two, that would be different. That it, it basically have a uh, transpose operation and it wouldn't be a multi-dimensional array. Okay. So now we'll talk about array operations. Clear everything. Okay. So we have, um, Basically for this, there's two definitions that MATLAB has for um, operations on arrays. So arithmetic operations on arrays. There's array operations, or that's element by element operations. And then what we have is matrix operations. So matrix operations, they're more what, maybe more familiar to you what you've done in your math class. So if you've taken linear algebra, that's what you did in math class. So, um, so these different, you know, methods here, element by element or matrix operations, they operate in a different way. So we're going to show you that through examples, um, because they do have their own unique, uh, cases when we want to use them. So the plan is we're going to go over some very basic element by element operations. Then we'll go over matrix operations. So again, what you've learned in math class. And then we're going to go over more complex element by element operations. I think this is a more kind of intuitive way to learn this stuff. Okay, so first, again, we're going to go by, go over some really basic element by element operations. And this is something that we've already been doing. So maybe I didn't explicitly state that it was element by element, but we've been doing stuff like this for a while now. So let's make some matrix B. So in this case, I'm gonna define this matrix B from two to eight, just for some review here. So I wanna start at two, and I wanna have a step size of one, and then I wanna end at eight. So that'll give us a row vector here, starting at two and then going to eight. And again, our step size is one. So because of that, we go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we can multiply a vector by a scalar, and that's going to increase the magnitude of the vector. So if I do two times B, then our answer here, <clears throat> our answer is gonna be four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So all it did is it multiplied each element or each value in our array here by two. So when I specify the, um, or emphasize rather, 
word element. We're going element by element in this array here. So I'm doing I'm doing the operation two times some element in the array for each element. So we do two by two, then two times three, two times four, two times five, so on. Okay, so I think that's pretty just intuitive from what you know what you know, but again the emphasis is on the word element by element. Okay, so we can also multiply a matrix by a scalar. So this is also similar to what you've done in math class, but again, we're gonna emphasize the word element by element. So we'll make some matrix here. We'll do three, zero, three, two, 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 eight, 10, six. Okay, so there's our matrix A. So I can multiply this by a scalar like I've done before. So I'll do, I'm just gonna make some variable that's called the mu, and then we'll do two times A. So if we do that, just as we just saw in the, in the vector, we're gonna have two multiplied by the matrix A, and basically each value in our matrix A is gonna be multiplied by two. So we have two times three, that's six. Two times zero, that's zero. Two times three, that's six. Two times two, four. You get it. You guys can do basic uh, multiplication. Um, so again, I'm gonna like, really drill this in your head. We're doing element by element in this matrix. So of course we could do some different number. We could do zero. So if I do zero times a, well, then all of them are gonna become zero. Can do three times a, and then that's gonna multiply each value in our matrix a by three. Okay, let's get that matrix again. So we can do um, addition and subtraction of array. So I guess we first have a row vector. So let's make our row vector x here. We have four, two, seven, eight. And then we can have subtraction. So we're, we'll do x minus two. Okay, and so MATLAB knows that x, that's our row vector that we just defined up here. And then we have minus two, and it's going to carry out this operation for each element again and this row vector. So we have four minus two is two, two minus two is zero, seven minus two is five, eight minus two is six. Okay, and then you could do it the other way. You know, we could do three minus x, and then it's gonna carry out the operation on each value in that row vector. So three minus four, negative one, three minus two, one. You guys get it. Okay, and then addition, that's gonna work in the same way. It's gonna be carried out for each element in that row vector. Okay, and then we can do it, of course, for a matrix as well. So let's make some matrix A, two, eight, seven, three, four, five, nine, zero, eight. So I can do A minus, we'll do, a minus five, sure. And then it's going to carry it out on each element in the array. So two minus five, negative three, two minus eight. Um, or sorry, I'm doing a minus five. So yeah, two minus five is, neg is negative three, and then eight minus five is three, seven minus five is two. And just like I showed you in the last slide, we can have some number and then subtract that number from the array. So we can do 20 minus a, and that'll carry out again for each element in our matrix. Okay, kind of tedious stuff here. So we can do addition and subtraction between vectors as well. So this time we, well, what we just did is we had a vector and then we added or subtracted or multiplied some scalar or we had a matrix and we used, again, some scalar. So we can do 
um, array and array. So let me clear this. So now we can add two row vectors if we want, or we can do it for column vectors, or we can do it for matrices as well. So we'll do r equals 3, 4, 10, 22. s equals 2, 8. So you see in the slide here, I put 0, 4. So 0, 4, and 4, they're the same value. I just put that so that this, uh, so these row vectors can line up a bit more, you know, visually. So I can just put 4 and then 10. Okay, now I can do R plus S, and then that's going to add our row vectors here. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, so R plus S. Okay, I just did that so we can kind of look at this a bit better so we can see what's going on. So we're doing 3 plus 2, 5, 4 plus 8, 12, 10 plus 4, 14, 22 plus 10, 32. So you can see it's adding uh, the corresponding elements or index in each of these row vectors. And then we can do subtraction as well, or we can do multiplication or division. It's all going to work the same. Okay, so do the dimensions of the vectors, do they need to be the same? The answer is going to be yes. So this is kind of going to go back to when I talked about using the, the zeros command again, which I, I guess, you know, to be honest right now, I'm blinking out on how to update the value. It is very basic, but apparently my, my brain can't really work quite right now. But we're going to show you this exercise so you can kind of get an idea of what I was talking about before. And then I'll let you know when my, when my brain actually works, I'll, you know, mention in the Discord or I'll talk about it next class for the zeros command. But we'll make a row vector here. A equals 3, 0, 3. And then B equals 4, 5, 6, 7. And then if I want to do some, some uh, calculation here, like A minus B, that's not going to work. It's going to say our matrix uh, dimensions, they must agree. So size of A and size of B. So size of A is 1 by 3, and size of B, that's a 1 by 4. So since they're different, I can do an operation between the two. So what we can do is update A right now, where A is 3, 0, 3. And really, you know, there should be a 0 here, because we don't have an, an integer there. So it's kind of the same as 3, 0, 3, 0. And then I can have B, and we can do A minus B. And now that's going to work for us. So now those row vectors, they're the same size, and we can do an operation between the two of them. Okay, and then we can do the same thing here, but with matrices as well. So I think this is a self-explanatory. I think we have an exercise, so I kind of want to get to that. Okay, yeah, we do. So um, I'm not going to go over this slide here because, again, it's it's the same, basically, like we just talked about for these row vectors. We can have two matrices, and we can do an operation between the two of them. In this case, we're only going to talk about addition and subtraction. If you take in linear algebra, then you know that multiplication is different. And then our division, that's going to be our left-hand operator in MATLAB. That's to solve a linear system of equations. So right now, we're just going to keep our focus, at least for matrices, on addition and subtraction. And we'll talk about uh, multiplication and our left-hand division later on. OK, so I'm going to have you work on this exercise here. You'll see that I have two stars here. So now I was making the slide last night, and I, you know, I, I put those in. But this is something that we're going to talk about later on. So you see here that I have a multiplication between a row vector here and then a column vector. So we're going to talk about that uh, probably next class. And then I also have a matrix multiplied by, um, well, I'm going to create a matrix from x and y and multiply that by our column vector z. So you don't need to do 2 or 3 and 4. 
right now I want you to work on this exercise and work on problems one and two. Or if you finish that and you're curious just to, to work on these, you know, the two other ones, three and four, you can do that as well. But that's really for later on in the class. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to work on this. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For for number three, I did like the parentheses with Y and then a st uh, star and then Z and then star. What is the the the, the Z part? The Z star. What is that? Uh, so the star that was just a little note. So you see, I put the the star in the bottom of the slide. So you don't need to work on three and four. That was okay. something that we talk about, you know, next class. Okay. All right, so I'll give you a few more seconds here. All right, so I'm gonna end this right now. So let's go over this. Okay, so let's define the, the matrix, uh, or sorry, the row vector X. We have 10, negative four, five, and eight. And then we have another row vector y, that's 2, 3, 22, 9. So x plus y, you know, we have 10 plus 2, that's 12, negative 4 plus 3, that's a negative 1, 5 plus 22 is 27, 8 plus 9 is 17. And then we have y minus x, 10 minus 2, um, sorry, y minus x, so 2 minus 10, negative 8, 3, minus negative four, seven. You guys can do basic math. Okay, so if we were going to do, I'll just briefly go over this. So if we did y times z, again, you didn't have to do this. We're gonna talk about this uh, next class. So y times z, so we have a row vector here and then we have a column vector for z. So if we do that, mm, sorry, I didn't, I didn't define z. Okay, C equals three, four, eight, two. There we go. I need it to be clean. Okay, Y, C, there we go. So Y times Z, that's gonna give us a scalar. So we're, we're taking this row vector, multiplying it by this column vector, and we're gonna get a scalar. So that'll be again a topic for next class. We don't you know, really have the time to go over it now. And then creating a two by four matrix from X and Y and multiplying this by Z. Um, you know, you can look at the slides for that. I do have it right here. Um, so we'll talk about that again next class. We, we don't really have the time for that now, but really those last two questions are really for those that are curious. If you want to look at it on your own, you can before next class. And, kind of go over that, but uh, that'll probably make more sense to those of you that have already taken linear algebra. But if you haven't, don't worry, we're gonna go over it in detail next class. Um, so before we go here, we have a few more minutes. Um, I kind of wanted to also talk about the quiz because I'm sure there are some of you that, um, you know, felt like you at least wanted to do better or, you know, anything like that. and. 
Uh, that's why I want to have multiple quizzes in this class, you know. I don't have a hard number, but eight or ten quizzes in this class, so you have multiple opportunities to increase your quiz average because that is a, a big portion of this class. I think it's 30% of your grade. Let's check. Okay, yeah, quizzes are 30% of the grade. So, you know, I want all of you to do well on the quizzes. So if you didn't do as well as you wanted to on this first quiz, um, don't worry. You know, you, have, you still have a lot of chances to improve your grade on the quizzes. But if you have any questions on the quiz, again, feel free to either stay after class or in office hours today at 12. Or if you wanna, you know, just ask me directly on any questions that you may have or how you can better prepare for the quizzes, then let me know because you know, I want all of you to do well on the quizzes and, and in this class. Okay, uh, let's see anything else. Again, we're gonna have homework. I'm going to assign that later today. That'll be due next Monday. Uh, for the homework, remember that your grade for that is based on completion. So, um, you know, if you have something that's wrong in there, I'm not gonna mark you wrong. I'm just giving you credit on if you made an effort and if you answered each question that I have. And that means, you know, I might have one question and you need to answer multiple things in that question. So I checked that as well. Uh, but make sure you check the homework solutions. And then our quiz won't be this Wednesday, but it'll be next Wednesday. So uh, are there any questions I can answer before we stop for today? When would you have like the comments you wrote on there by before our quizzes? Uh, the comments? Uh, like the feedback. Oh yeah, so I'm, I'm I need to figure out how you guys can look at the feedback for, for the quiz. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So I need, I'll check that today. Uh, Cause yeah, I thought you should be able to look at it, but it sounds like you can't. So I'll work on that. And whenever I get that figured out, I'll put that in the, uh, in an, in an announcement or either on discord. And once we are able to see it, where could we like access it? Um, so on, yeah. I'm thinking it should just be on Canvas where if you were a student, so let me go to student view. So this is what I'm thinking, what should happen. You should go to quizzes and then you would look at your quiz here. So quiz one, MATLAB basics, and then uh, let's see. And there should be you know some link here to take you to your quiz. So like right here, I'm guessing right now. So you click on that and then you should be able to see what you put and then what my comments were. I don't know if that's how it's gonna work, but that's my best guess right now. Okay. Okay, any other questions? If not, you guys are free to go, it's 11.15, but I'll stay here for a bit. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too.